I'm done cooking. I finished two weeks early and I'm gonna move on to permaculture. Now, the deal is I'm not quitting. I'm moving on because I've accomplished all that I feel I can accomplish here. I actually started studying cooking in early December. What I discovered in the last week, what I realized is that there's a link between how much you can study cooking and how much you're practicing, how much you're actually cooking and working on the techniques. And for me, practically, I've got a cap on how much practice I do. Practically speaking, I cook twice a day for myself, and then I have an opportunity once a week to cook for other people. Of course, I could do things in my life to make more opportunities to cook, uh, but because of where I live and my situation, it would just be a whole thing. So I've opted not to do that. Early on when I was studying, it was easy to read and have lots of realizations. I was uh, absorbing a lot of the concepts of cooking. I was learning about the chemistry of cooking and all these other things that I just never knew before. And then, so when I started cooking, I was applying all these things. Now that I'm cooking and now that I'm basically getting two reps of cooking in a day, for me, what works is not to do a different recipe or a different technique every single day because it takes more than one rep to learn from doing, right? So what I've been doing is I set a new thing I wanna learn like omelets or sourdough or whatever, something specific that I can actually do. And then I study how to do it and then I, and then I practice it for as long as it takes until I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on it. That means that there's, there's just a cap of how much studying you can do. I found myself with the idea that like, okay, right, this is my Skillathon project. I need to be spending all this time on it. And I would spend, you know, uh, two ish hours cooking a day. Cause that's about how long it was taking me to feed myself. But then I would go and study and I'd already read everything about what I was doing that day. So I would just read other random stuff about cooking and I wasn't absorbing it because it didn't have anything to do with what I was actually doing. So in other words, I feel like before I thought I would, I got to the point where I've activated cooking as a process of improvement. So whereas before this month, I wasn't improving at all with my cooking. I was just repeating what I already know how to, knew how to do. I have gone through and activated a level of understanding of cooking so that I can consistently improve. So what that looks like for me going forward is really what I'm just what I'm doing now, which is picking a new thing to learn, studying it, and then repeating it until I feel like I've got it and then I can move on to the next thing. So that's a slower process. Um, I have to cook anyways to feed myself. So it's sort of very naturally built into my life. So the only way I'm going to stagnate again is if I just go back to making, you know, oatmeal for dinner and bland beans and rice with hot sauce and salt and pepper on it, uh, which I'm not going to do because I feel like I've I've gotten to a point where I'm excited about cooking. I enjoy cooking new things and I enjoy doing a good job and I, I'm enjoying thinking about it. I'm enjoying saying, hmm, what's the texture like? How could this be improved? What's missing? What's too much? What's out of balance? So I feel like I've activated cooking as craft rather than just cooking as not starving as a practice in my life. So for example, among the things I learned, I learned that salt doesn't just add flavor, it actually changes the chemical structure of molecules within the food that you add it to. It like it unkinks, pro unkinks protein strands in eggs. Uh, it gets lipids, uh, like it gels lipids in steaks and that's why you wanna salt meat early so that salt has a chance to diffuse. I also learned about salt diffusion through the meat and get into those lipids and those connective tissues and then it uh, breaks them down and it turns them into gel. And that's what makes that like fall apart in your mouth. I learned about salt osmosis, uh, or osmosis rather, and that's what causes chicken and vegetables to sweat and what that means. So time is an important factor with a lot of things. Obviously with seasoning with salt, it is an important factor with bread, autolise. I learned that the wild cult culture, like sourdough, is fermented. I didn't know that sourdough was fermentation. Um, and, and that fermentation is essentially pre-digestion of food before you eat it, which has all sorts of positive health benefits like breaking down phytic acid and other things like that. I learned about acid and it like brightens flavor and it can bring balance to the force, I mean to flavor and food. I learned a lot about texture and how to think about texture. Um, like I learned how you get 
like you get flaky pastries because you, you fold in cold butter it has to be cold so it doesn't melt and coat the proteins uh which causes it to be chewy instead of tender um and then so you and then you heat it quickly and uh the steam evaporates and creates those pockets of water vapor which creates the flakiness so i learned a lot about how cooking is chemistry i learned a lot about the chemistry i learned to think about the molecular structure of things a big part of what I learned is is where to go for this information because before when I would try to find a new recipe I would just google blah 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 find a recipe and then follow the instructions and maybe the instructions were good maybe they weren't maybe I followed them well maybe I didn't but I wasn't able to think critically about the recipes I was using and I wasn't able to not use a recipe to make something that was tasty if I guessed with food it was always weird okay it was always weird but now I like I know which books to go to. I have books that point me in the right direction. So like I I know enough to know that like oh I'm doing this. I need to brush up on you know the chemistry of protein strands or whatever. Techniques wise, so I improved my sautéing mostly by experimenting with different levels of heat and um, tasting every minute or so and say and and tasting the difference of the flavors through the sauteing process that was i i don't know if that's a technique or a concept or what but i learned to actually taste my food and think about it it seems obvious i never really paid attention to it but now i'm able to bite into something and i i can think oh that it's actually all the same texture and so this isn't this isn't a very interesting experience like culinarily speaking right like it's all mush or it's all crunch or whatever um, and I'm able to think like, well, what could I do? Like, I understand one of the reasons certain types of uh, Mexican foods are delightful is because you've got pico in there and you've got the crunch in there, not to mention the brightness from the acid that balances out everything else that's going on in there. Really just thinking about contrast, which is a consistent mental model between all sorts of design, all sorts of creative endeavors, isn't it? Contrast. Uh, with cooking this contrast between texture uh you know soft tender crispy crunchy hot and cold a color like a plate that has contrasting colors affects the experience of eating the thing uh in the same way that you know you've got contrast as an element of composition in any other creative endeavor um i improved technique wise i improved my my knuckles knife work i learned about folding wet into dry elements for pancakes <laughs> before <laughs> before skillathon I literally I would get my um, I would get my drill and I have a, a whisk thing and I would put it in my cordless drill and I would just whip I would, I would whip my pancakes. Don't do that. You don't want to over whip pancakes. By the way, I improved pancake flipping. I improved. I, I I can now toast rice and add seasoning to rice and beans uh, as they cook so that they're actually tasty. Like you could actually eat the rice they make now and be like, oh, this is tasty rather than just totally bland. Um, so yeah, that's just, I don't know, that's a chunk of what I learned. I would say also what I learned is that, particularly in the context of cooking for other people, having a plan ahead of time is killer. Thinking about um, how much time you want to spend doing prep versus not. What things you want to prep early, so like salsas and sauces and things, you might want to prep as early as possible so, so that the flavors can start to come together. And so that you can chill them and have them at the right temperature when it's time to eat. Um, I And then, yeah, really just thinking ahead and designing the menu ahead of time takes so much of the sort of overhead out of when you're actually doing the thing. I think ideally when you're cooking for other people, particularly if they're going to be there while you're cooking, you want to have done all of the thinking already. So like when I cooked for my friends over the weekend, I had, I did a pretty good job, but not perfect job, but I had everything listed out. I said, okay, at this time I'm going to do this, at that time I'm going to do that. I, I pre-made some stuff at home before I went over to their place and then I, I, I knew what I was going to do. So I didn't have to make any major decisions while we were all chatting in the kitchen and trying to visit and catch up. So that's, that's an important thing to think of. And then just how ambitious you're trying to be. Like I was trying to be a little ambitious because I'm doing this whole skillathon thing with that with that meal. Um, but in the future, I, I would scale it back a bit. I mean, I had two sauces and pico and guac and all this other stuff, and it was a lot. Good learning experience. But I also know to think about how to design 
a menu that is going to suit the social experience that I'm trying to have. So that's, you know, that that's part of what I learned. Um, in terms of a continuation plan, how am I going to not let my learning stagnate? Well, I've learned a lot of conceptual stuff that I think is just never going to go away. But I got to a point where um, I can continue to improve steadily from here on out. And so in years to come, I'll just be getting better and better and better. And I can incorporate this in cooking as a skill into my life instead of just um, a thing I do every day in order to not starve. And really that just looks like I, you know, I pick a new technique, a new dish, a new whatever, and then I just practice it and I do it over and over again until I feel like I've got it. And then when I feel like I've got that, I move on to a new thing. And so that's a very low stress way of incorporating learning into an activity that I have to do all the time, every day, anyways. So for example, right now, I'm still working on omelets. I haven't quite got them. I'm still working on the technique. I'm still working on the right heat and the right technique with scraping the bottom of it. Um, and I'm also working on um, whole wheat sourdough flatbread. I'm pretty good now with uh, feeding and managing the starter. I've got that pretty dialed, but I'm working on this, this new idea, which is uh, whole wheat flatbreads, um, cooking them on, on the skillet. So I'm really happy with how this month, how this, these two weeks went with cooking. I feel like I broke through the stagnation barrier. I'm cooking healthier, more balanced food. I'm having a more interesting experience, both cooking and eating. I'm approaching it like craft, but I'm, I also feel like I'm not taking it to an extreme. It's not taking over my life. And I feel way more competent to cook for other people, cook food that other people aren't gonna think is weird. Um, and I also feel confident that I've got a system for improving my cooking consistently, steadily over time. So that's a total win for me. I do feel like I learned a lot and I'm also happy that I, that I was okay to say like, Oh, look, you know what? Two weeks into this, I thought this was going to take a month, but two weeks, this is as good as it gets. We're going to move on to something else. Next thing, like I said, is permaculture. Stay tuned for that. I'll be talking about my design and my approach and what my project plan is for that. Uh, really quite excited about that. I've, I've been wanting to dig deep, do a deep dive on permaculture for a long time. So that's going to be quite exciting.